Thank you so much for all of your comments and one of them keeps on coming back. It's about smart bench and can it do 3D sculpting? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're actually going to try and make this, which we've previously tried in MDF out of Corian. As we make it, we'll talk through the process that we use to use the software and to generate the tool paths. And then we'll actually uh, walk you through how we set smart bench up to actually to make it. So cute, I can't stop. It's just, ooh. let's go. Okay, so our first job is to find a 3D model of the lizard. I'm gonna use Thingiverse, which has got a load of free uh, 3D models. I kind of like the look of this guy. He's thin enough to fit into a 12 mil sheet. And so I'm gonna go ahead and download the STL file and import into Fusion 360. Now, I'm gonna cover Fusion quite quickly and put a public link to the model in the description below um, if you wanna follow up on the details. But first job, let's reduce the number of triangles in this STL model um, using the reduce in the mesh environment. Um, quite a simple tool and that will reduce the resolution down to something more manageable. It doesn't need to be that high for what we're about to do. Um, that will speed up our processing time within Fusion. After that, um, we want to convert the triangles from the SDL file into a BREP. That just means that Fusion is able to look at it as a solid body before generating those toolpaths. So there's our lizard, but before we do the toolpaths, we're actually gonna add in a plinth feature. Um, there's a practical reason for this. Um, it's just so that the, the little toes and tail don't snap off when we remove the lizard from the job. Next, we're defining what the stock is in the manufacturing environment, so Fusion know what it's cutting out of. And now we'll start on our first cutting job, which is we'll, we'll, uh, we'll cut around the outside of the lizard first with a quarter inch cutter um, and this may or may not be the right strategy but um, this will give us clearance uh, when we do the sculpting and also part off the job um, so there's our first op and now we'll move on to the second op which will be the actual sculpting itself we'll use a three mil bull nose cutter for this job um, again, the settings, if, if you're interested, please follow the link in the description below. But the, the major one here is we'll, we'll start with a two mil step over, which is incredibly rough. Um, but for the purposes of this project, um, I think, you know, lives is still going to look fine and we can improve it later if, if we, if we like. There's Fusion just generating our tool paths, um, doing a simulation as to, what that's going to look like when it removes the stock. And so we've got our two um, operations defined and, and really we just need to save these out now into G-code, which is what SmartBench can um, understand to run the job. First job there was the part off and the second job, um, as you can see from the tool pathing, is uh, the contouring for the sculpting. And then finally, we're going to transfer those files from our computer over to SmartBench via Wi-Fi. And with that done, our next job is to go up to SmartBench, set it up and get cutting. Let's talk a little bit about the setup. So we've got our curry in here, lovely shade of green. Uh, we've got a, another matching 12 mil thickness piece of support for the runners on the upper beam. And we've got a spoil board underneath because we're punching through and we're gonna be cutting out the gecko. The files are on SmartBench. First thing we need to do is to home the machine. So that's the Z-axis homing. Now the X and Y are going to home. And this, because this is the first time that this is homed uh, since power on, it's actually going to go through a square axis operation. That aligns the X axis with the Y axis so that it's nice and square. Because it's gone through that, it's now going to rehome. I want to start the cut roundabout in this area here. So what I'm going to do is just navigate the head over to that position. And because I want to see exactly where we want to start our cut, I'm just going to take the, the front of the dust shoe up there. Now I need to tell 
smart bench exactly where that top surface of the material is. Um, for that, we have a, a neat little um, piece of kit. This is called the Pro. So that lives here. I'll bring that down. And I'm going to insert that onto the top of the material. And then on the console, I'm just going to push the Pro button. And now if you look there, you can see that the cutter is actually searching for that probe plate. As soon as it touches it, there we go, just touched it. As soon as it touches it, um, moves the cutter out of the way and remembers where that top surface of the material is. We've also got our vacuum on underneath here. Um, this is connected through the power socket uh, so that when you hit go on smart bench, it automatically turns the vacuum on, which is really cool. Safety first. Of course. Ready, steady, go. Okay, so that's the contour cut done. Uh, next job, we're going to do a tool change and we're going to put in the three mil cutter and we'll use that obviously to do the contouring. Okay, so that's our three millimeter ball nose cutter in. And if you wanted to know the difference, by the way, between the collets um, that we supply with this machine, this is the pro version. Let me show you really quickly because it's very cool. Main difference between the collets is that you can very easily take blades out. And the reason for that, I'm going to show you very quickly, is because it's got a captive collet in there, which is uh, the way that it's being wire cut means that as you apply torque to the nut, it spreads the load very evenly across the shank of the tool you get way better concentricity and it also makes that entire thing a lot easier to fit the tools. You never get tools jamming inside the collet. Um, in my view, it's completely worth the money because we change the tools a lot to do different jobs. Um, but we include the basic uh, for the budget user. Um, it's, uh, we could do a whole video on that, but I just wanted to share that with you. Next thing, of course, we need to put it back in the machine and zero it, same procedure as before. Same thing, get it close to the surface, insert our probe plate, hit probe. Done. The next file, which is our three mil ball nose cut. Joe's finished. Come on, have a look. Check him out. He's not as furry, but uh, that's a Korean thing. Let's have a look at him. He's lovely. That I really, you can see the witness marks from the the three mil ball nose cutter there, which I quite like actually. It's kind of like a sand effect, and that's because we were using a two mil step over, which is. Two millimeters is huge, really. I mean, if we wanted to do a smooth surface, then we, we'd take that right down to, you know, fractions of a millimeter, which we can do, but this was a quick cut, see where we could get to with it. Things that I would change, a huge amount of that volume was just done on the three mil ball nose cutter. It would be far more sensible to use the six mil, or sorry, the quarter inch cutter just to take out most of the dead meat. And then the three mil cutter will have just finished off the surfaces. Um, but overall, that's cool, I really like him. Let's take him out.
Pretty proud of this. And okay, this was just a test piece really, um, but I can imagine this being part of, of a panel uh, on a, you know, a door, some decorative material, that kind of thing. I'm actually gonna give it uh, to my friend who's really into lizards. This was an incredibly long video, but we really wanted to give you an idea of the, the project as a whole from start to finish. Please, if you have any questions or comments, just drop them into the comments below. And we would love to get back to you. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one. I hope that was useful. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.